managing risk. That is the topic of this latest To The Point webcast. Hello, I'm Maggie Miller here with Scott Crawford. He is Research Director of Security at 451 Research. So welcome, Scott. Thank you, Maggie. I appreciate the, the invitation and the opportunity to be here. Well, this is a really important topic to many organizations right now. So first, just tell us, what is your definition of risk and why do organizations need to take a risk-based approach when it comes to security today? Yeah, that's, as you might imagine, a very popular question in our field today. And there's really a number of definitions of risk, but a lot of what a lot of them have in common is, at its most basic, a deviation from expected outcomes. And typically, that's expressed in terms of uh, increasingly measurement. Uh, so what does that mean in terms of loss in some tangible way? Uh, often expressed in terms of financial impact, but can also be expressed in terms of the impact on the business. So in terms of operational impact, and certainly we've seen several incidents of that already just this year. Now we're not even halfway through 2021. We've already seen a number of instances where we've seen businesses sustain impact in a number of different ways from, from cyber threats. Um, other aspects in terms of, uh, you know, there's not just direct loss to assets, impact on the brand, impact on confidence in the brand, but also in terms of operational processes and critical functionality. In fact, when uh, we see uh, ransomware attacks, one of the primary outcomes of that is uh, impact on the ability to do fundamental operations. And for many organizations, it's a wake up call. Maybe the first time they've really had <laughs> such a real world, you want to consider it an assessment. There's a saying in security that everybody gets a penetration test, but not everyone gets the results. And when you get an operational <laughs> test from an attacker like that, you may be surprised at the dependencies you have on various aspects of IT and digital technology. So loss can be expressed in a number of ways, but not least of which the impact on operations, which means that there's a couple of aspects to risk that are really important to consider, particularly when it comes to uh, cyber risk. And that's basically the time factor, how long will it take you to respond? How long does it take you to uh, isolate and remediate an incident? And if you're gonna be more proactive, how long does it take you to be proactive about containing potential risk? And also the visibility into the factors that affect risk. Once you have an idea what your uh, primary threat scenarios may be, do you have adequate visibility across your environment, across your control techniques? So. There's a number, we start pulling on the thread of risk and we're often surprised how far it leads. So a simplistic definition for many organizations means that they really haven't pulled hard enough on that thread in a lot of cases and their definition will probably need to expand as they do so. And why should decision makers start at the end point to scope an attack and better understand risk? Well, that also begs something of a definition. And in part, it's the definition of what's an endpoint. And again, in simplest terms, an endpoint is where digital work gets done. Uh, and it, I wouldn't say it may not matter what it is, but I would say that it assumes a number of forms. I think at top of mind for most of us is the thought of the end user endpoint, the end user workstation, the the platform on which uh, individuals do their work, typically a personal device, personal computer or laptop, but an endpoint can be anything at any end of a network connection to take another uh, definition. So that could be on the server side, for example, it could be an application, maybe an application on which a business has a critical dependency. It may be the server or the server architecture on which that application runs. It may have a lot to do with the dependencies of that underlying architecture as well too. It may be non-traditional endpoints now in terms of what endpoint is typically meant in IT. So as we see the growth and expansion of operational technologies, the increasing prevalence of the internet of things, uh, particularly the industrial internet of things in the enterprise, the definition of endpoint is being stretched every day in almost every way so that too is something that as organizations start pulling on that thread, they're going to need to broaden their definition of that as well. So why is risk score alone not enough? What are some of the other capabilities that are important to decision makers, such as being able to prioritize alerts, remediate and take action quickly? So the examples that you've given have much to do with two things. One is time, the, the impact of time, both on detection and response and proactive containment, proactive remediation. Uh, also, uh, the activities involved, and a lot of times we think of that in terms of business processes, but the process is involved on two sides of threat response. One of them is reactive after the fact, how long does it take to respond and what are the processes involved? 
The other is more proactive. Uh, how long and how much effort does it take to uh, harden an organization's resilience against threats? A lot of times when we talk about risk score, uh, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people may think in terms, again, it, it may seem simplistic, but it's a, it's a starting point for organizations to think in terms of the assets at risk. Uh, and these aren't just tangible assets like financial assets, uh, dollars and cents for which an organization may be responsible or whatever the currency uh, at issue is uh, in a given environment. But regardless whether what type of asset it is, if it's an IT asset, a digital asset of any kind, often these are assessments that are static, they're point in time. This is the state of the assets or the asset base as it is now, even though it's acknowledged that, that asset base is constantly changing, in fact, even more so given the prevalence of the technologies that we discussed a moment ago around the evolution of the endpoint. But still that's considered point in time. These business processes are more dynamic. They take place over time. So when we're talking about a risk score, do we have a way, what we really mean by that is, do we have a way to adequately measure the impact of these processes on the business? Because they take time, they take money, they take uh, the time of people, which translates uh, into financial impact. So these things may not always be fully taken into account in score. And to know what your processes are for both pre uh, proactive prevention and hardening of resilience, and responsive containment, those all have an impact on the business, those merit measurement too, because they can be critical to an effective response and effective resilience as well. And regarding solutions, explain why an integrated graded platform empowers risk managers to do more with real time, high fidelity data, such as gain visibility and control to make critical decisions and of course take action. Right. Uh, one of the things uh, when, that we're talking about when we think about the endpoint, uh, really where, what's led us to that consideration is, um, again, I, I may be overusing this metaphor of pulling on threads, but it's where a lot of uh, the evolution of this field ha is, has resulted in what we have today and where, where we've led ourselves as an industry. We start asking these questions and we start looking at real world examples of both uh, proactive resilience and hardening and responsive containment and, and um, remediation. Uh, and so as we start pulling on these threads, we begin to find that, you know, a lot of times uh, getting an alert about something that looks like a deviation from expected activity um, just doesn't deliver enough information for us, may not deliver enough context about the nature of what we're looking at. If we get an alert or any kind of indicator at all, when we do, a lot of times what we're missing is the context. Well, if an attack, let's say, for example, an attack had an impact on an endpoint. Well, what exactly was that impact? Is it serious enough to merit consideration for further investigation and triage, which means investment of time and resources to do so? A lot of times that information may not be centrally available, may not be forwarded by log forwarders. It may not be managed under existing systems. It may be something that an investigator has to go get. If they have to go get it from the endpoint or from the source, in the past, they historically used, you know, whatever tools were available for that to do some sort of triage on the individual endpoint. That may be inconsistent from endpoint to endpoint. It may not be repeatable. It may be very expensive to do that at scale across an enterprise. And it happens sufficient, uh, sufficiently often that organizations begin to recognize they need a more consistent approach to gathering this contextual information. They may have to go get it from the endpoints. Why not begin with an approach that builds out an architecture, not only to expand that visibility of the endpoint for things like file system changes, what's changed on this file, is there malware on this endpoint, what type of activity has happened on the endpoint, what kind of processes has happened on the endpoint, to build a system that is more comprehensive, more consistent, and more repeatable in gathering this information, and furthermore, doing it over a period of time. If you're looking for evidence that has to be collected over a period of time for any activity from, let's say you're presented with a threat you hadn't seen before, or a type of attack you hadn't seen before, a vulnerability previously unknown, you want to see if there's evidence that it's been exploited even before you or anyone uh, was aware that it even existed. So having um, a centralized, a, a, a consistent platform for doing that, for gathering that information, doing it in a consistent, repeatable, and therefore more efficient way is more cost-effective, more consistent in delivering a, a more mature level of response and containment. And uh, you know, one of, among the many reasons that organizations are considering this type of approach today. 
And what's your final takeaway about risk and endpoint security that you would recommend to organizations? Huh, well, it's not just about exposure and assets. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's also how prepared are you in terms of you know, the processes that you have in place on both the proactive and the responsive side? Uh, how well developed are your pro uh, pro uh, processes for being aware of potential risk and exposure and dealing with those exposures and mitigate them before uh, you have an actual incident appear? When incidents appear, and they will appear, how prepared are you to deal with them? Uh, how prepared are you for things that you haven't previously seen? Uh, what type of processes do you have in place to respond to those? So it's not just about you know, the static picture of assets at risk, it's preparedness of your organization, the maturity of your, of your organization to respond and engage on both those proactive and responsive fronts. On both sides, you really have to ask yourself how comprehensive is your visibility across your environment? How flexible is it to adapt to things that you previously hadn't seen or anticipated before? And are your, is your approach comprehensive in time as well? Will you, ability, will you have the ability to go back and look at historic data to the extent that you need to, to get a better understanding of what you may be up against today that was previously unseen, but you may have the evidence that you, that you may not previously have been aware of if you have the ability to gather it, collect it, and analyze it. So all of these things are things that enter into an organization's thinking about being prepared. So these are the things that I would encourage an organization to keep in mind when planning for cyber risk going forward and for recognizing the importance of a strategy at the endpoint will be to them going forward. And thank you, Scott, for your insights on risk today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you again for asking me today. If you would like to learn more about how Tanium can help with risk, you can visit our website, tanium.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Maggie Miller, and this is To The Point.